Welcome to Electroline. Now here's another application of Newton's second law, kind of an interesting one. Here we have a person in a in kind of like a box. The mass of the box is 25 kilograms. The mass of the person is 50 kilograms. The box is being suspended by a cable that goes over a pulley. And then the other side of the cable is being held by the person inside the box. And then the whole contraption is then attached to the ceiling. The question is, what is the tension between the cable, the pulley and the ceiling, the tension on the left side, the tension on the right side, and what is the force required by the person to hold on to that cable? Of course, this force should be the same as this tension right here because it is the same cable. And typically with a pulley, if the pulley does not have mass and does not have friction, which is the case in this example, the tension on both sides of the pulley should also be the same. Now, the four conditions that we have to look at is first, when the whole contraption, when the box and the pulley and the person are not moving, the person is just holding on to it and nothing is moving, then how much force is required when the person wants the box to go up at a constant velocity, how much force is required when the box is supposed to go down at a constant velocity, and finally, what is the force required in the tension in the cables when the acceleration of the box is upward at one meter per second squared. Well, the first thing we're going to do is have a a static situation. So for part A, everything is not moving. So we have A, so not moving, everything is static. And when everything is static, we can then draw a free body diagram about the pulley, like this. And then realize that the force up at this cable must equal the sum of the two forces down here, or the tension up should equal to the tension over on these two cables, and again, like I said before, that the tension here should equal the tension there if the cable is the same cable going around the pulley. So what we can say here is that tension one on the up direction is equal to the sum of tension two plus tension three. Now, the, the whole weight of both the person, the mass with the mass of 50 kilograms, and the mass of the, of the box at 25 kilograms, the whole weight is being suspended by both cables two and three. They must be equal, therefore the total force or the total tension T1 should equal the sum of the two weights, which is M, the small mass times acceleration to gravity, plus the big mass times acceleration to gravity. So in this case, that would be little m, little m plus big M, times the force of gravity, so in this case that is 25 kilograms plus 50 kilograms times acceleration of gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And so the total tension would then be equal to, and of course I need to find my calculator here. So it's 75 times 9.8, that's a total of 735 newtons, which is therefore the tension in cable one, that's this cable right here, which then must be equal to the sum of these two cables, and we also know that T2 must equal T3, therefore that is equal to one half T1, which is equal to one half 735 newtons, so divide by two, and we get this is equal to 367.5 newtons. So what that means is that the tension in cable one is 735 newtons, the tensions in each of the two cables, T2 and T3, is equal to 367.5 newtons, half of 735, and the force required here must equal to the tension three, which is also 367.5 newtons. That is in the case when nothing is moving. Now, the next question is, what will happen when we start pulling in such a way that the box is moving upward at a constant velocity. Now, first of all, of course, we are at a static situation. Now we want to get the box moving, so it's going to require additional force to get the box moving upward. There's going to be a short period of an acceleration, but once we reach the desired velocity, at that point, the force required should be just enough to keep the box moving upward at a constant velocity. As it turns out, surprisingly enough, that the amount of force required to keep things in a static situation is exactly the same as the amount of force required to have the box moving up at a constant velocity. So therefore, for part B, we could say that T1 is also equal to 735 newtons, 
We know that T2 is equal to T3, which is therefore equal to the force, is also equal to 367.5 newtons. Seems counterintuitive. However, if you remember Newton's first law that says that once an object is in motion, it will continue to be in motion forever without any change, as, as long as there's no effect of any outside forces, the object will continue to move up so it does not require any additional force. So that is correct. In part C, when we have a constant velocity downward, again, the same rule happens. The same rule is in effect that whenever an object is in motion, it will continue in motion forever without any change to its velocity or its direction until an outside force comes and changes that. So we can also say that for part C, tension 1 is equal to 735 newtons and tension 2, which is equal to tension 3, which is equal to the force applied by the person in the box, is equal to 367.5 newtons. So that is all still the same. Now for part D, when there is an acceleration, now things are different. The will we will require additional force, the person will have to apply additional force to get the box accelerated upward at one meter per second squared. Now an easy way to handle that problem is to take a look at the tension in this cable right here. That tension, tension one, will have to be equal to the weight holding it up against gravity, so it would be m plus m, so the total weight time of course times acceleration due to gravity so tension one must uphold the weight of both the person and the box which is the mass of the person plus the mass of the box times acceleration due to gravity plus the additional force required to accelerate both the box and the person upward at one meter per second squared so therefore that would be plus the mass of the box plus the mass of the person times acceleration due to gravity that means that tension one must equal m plus m times g plus a. So that means that tension 1 was equal to 75 kilograms, that's a sum of 25 plus 50, times g which would be 9.8 plus 1, 10.8 meters per second squared. So tension 1 will now be equal to 75 times 10.8 and we get 810 newtons. Now that we have the force on tension 1, what should be the force in tension 2 and tension 3? Well again, since it's the same cable going over the pulley, that tension must be equal, that cannot change. So we know that T2 must equal T3, and we know that T2 plus T3 has to add up to T1, the total tension. Therefore again, we can say that T2, which is equal to T3, which is equal to one half T1, which is 405 newtons, which is half, of course, 810 newtons. I said, well, how do you know that? How can you be sure? And of course, at the same time, if T3 is equal to 405 newtons, the force required for the person to accelerate the box and himself up at one meter per second squared would also have to be 405 newtons. Another way to figure this out, another way to verify that this is correct, is to draw free body di uh, two free body diagrams, one for the person and one for the box. So you can see here that if you draw a free body diagram about the person and all the forces that are involved in this case, and let me get a different color. So you can see that first of all we have the weight of the person coming down, that would be m times g, the force due to gravity. Then we have the uh, force of the cable pulling on the person upward, so that would be this force right here. And then we would also have the normal force of the box pushing upward against the person right here. So that would be the normal force, that is the box pushing against the feet, pushing the person up. Then if we take those three forces and use Newton's second law, we can now say that F equals ma. All right, actually we should call this net force, because after all it's the net force that causes the acceleration on the mass. So the net force will be the two forces pulling up minus the force pulling down, so that would be the normal force plus the force that pulls the person up minus the weight of the person, mg, and that must equal ma, which in this case means that the normal force plus the force by which the person pulls will be equal to the mg plus MA. All right, 
We can now do the same thing for the box. So in the case of the box, we have T2 pulling up. We have the normal force on the box, so that would be the normal force, that would be the effective weight of the person pushing down on the box, plus of course we also have the weight of the box pulling down. So again, using Newton's second law, we can say that F net is equal to the mass of the box times its acceleration, and in this case the net force will be the tension pulling up minus the weight of the box minus the normal force, the normal force caused by the person pushing back on the box. So that would be T2 minus mg minus the normal force, and that equals ma. Of course, then we can simplify this by moving the mg to the other side. So we have T2 minus the normal force equals mg plus ma. Now we have these two equations. And if we solve them simultaneously, we can solve for F or T2. Remember in this case that F and T2 will be equal to one another because the F is equal to T3 and T3 must be equal to T2. All right, if we add the two equations together, let's see what happens. When we add this equation to this one, uh, we can have minus N plus T2. So instead of T2, I'm going to say that T2 is equal to F. So in this case, I'm going to go plus F. So I reverse the position of those, equals mg plus ma. Notice that m here is the mass of the box, the big M is the mass of the person. When I add the two equations together, notice that the normal force drops out. F2 times F is equal to, when I add all these together, I get m plus little m times g plus a. And notice that 2f equals this, therefore f equals half of that. And you can then see that the tension 2 equals to tension 3 equals 1 half the tension 1, where tension 1 was also equal to m plus m times g plus a. So that means that this can then be interpreted as 2f equals t1 or f equals 1 half, 1 half t1, which means 1 half t1, which was 810 newtons. That means 1 half t1, which is 405 newtons. So even if you use free body diagrams and you solve those two equations simultaneously, you'll get the exact same results for the tension in the top cable or the tension in these two cables, which of course is half the tension in the top cable, and the tension in these two cables is exactly the amount of force the person in the box needs to pull on the cable with in order to push the box and the person up at one meter per second squared. Last question you may ask yourself, is that even possible because of course the person cannot pull with any more force than the weight of the person itself. And of course big M times G, notice that big M is 50 kilograms, G is 9.8. 50 times 9.8 is bigger than the 405 newtons required to accelerate the box up. So you can say that is indeed possible, it's less than the weight of the person, so the person can indeed pull with a force of 405 newtons. And that's how we do this problem.